BTV. We had terrific weather for the first part of the week, but big changes are on the way. I'll have all the details in your full forecast coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 4, will Augusta commissioners agree on a permanent city administrator? Where things stand with today's vote? Plus, plans for a pulpit land in Aiken County. What's also being proposed at the same site? And preparing future teachers for the classroom. The funding from a local organization to help curb the shortage. Your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thanks so much for joining us. Brad's off today. Coverage you can count on begins in Augusta with accusations flying as leaders attempt to name a permanent city administrator. Last week, a Lincoln County commissioner is being investigated by the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. Cooper Client currently serves District 3. GBI investigators would not say anything other than a case is currently open on Client. Lincoln County Commission Chair Walker Norman tells News Channel 6 that Clyatt has been a dedicated member of the board for 16 years and prays he's innocent of any allegations. The GBI also investigating a Tolliver County Sheriff's deputy. Joshua Wilson faces several charges, including home invasion and aggravated assault, stemming from an incident last week in Greensboro. Wilson started with the Tolliver County Sheriff's Office several weeks ago. He has since been terminated. Earlier this year, he ran for sheriff in Greene County. Meteorologist Sherry Sheely joins us now, and Sherry, wow, another nice weather day. Yes, absolutely beautiful outside when you see these blue skies and just some wispy clouds as we can see on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Sky View Cam in Waynesboro, and that's the theme we see in most spots in the CSRA today, and that's because we have high pressure that's in control of our forecast, and notice all that orange which indicates dry air, but we have some moisture that's starting to creep into the area, which is increasing that cloud cover, especially in our southern line counties. We can kind of see that with our temperatures right now as we're at 86 here in Augusta, 87 in Evans, but to our south, a few degrees cooler at 84 degrees in Swainsboro. On top of that, check out these dew points in the 50s and even some 40s there on the map. And remember, when your dew points and your air temps are further apart, that means it's less humid and feels really great out there. So nice break from the humidity and slightly cooler temperatures. So for your after work planner for the next couple of hours, temperatures in the 80s, so a few degrees warmer than yesterday, topping out there at 87, but then cooling down to 80 degrees by 8 o'clock tonight. And as we go into those evening hours and into Wednesday, you'll notice those clouds starting to increase and showing a change in our forecast coming up for the middle of the week. I'll have more details for you coming up in your full forecast. Jenny? All right, Sherry, thank you. An update now on a story we've been following. The site of a would-be chicken plant in Aiken is now set to become a new subdivision. Aiken Bureau Chief Sean Kavistock is live with more. Hello, Sean. Hey there, Jenny. It's great to be with you. You might remember back in March, I told you about that proposed chicken processing plant. It would have been built here off of Frontage Road in Aiken County. Now there's talk of bringing nearly 300, jo 300 homes rather, to this exact same spot. The subdivision, Crate and Metals, will be built here. It will feature 284 homes built in two phases. Amenities include pickleball courts, a dog park, trails, and 20% green space. The zoning was there. The zoning was in place for the subdivision, so they decided to move forward with that. Now, this subdivision will be, the house will be in the 250 range, which is the sweet spot for many, many people. And Jenny, right now, all of this is in its planning phases. County leaders told me they plan to revisit this within the next few months. Live in Aiken County, I'm Aiken Bureau Chief Sean Cabbage-Stock, WJBF News Channel 6. All right, Sean, thank you. The Aiken County Public School District is looking to update security at several schools. Board members are applying for a $250,000 grant through the state. Those funds would be vestibules, would build vestibules rather, at East Aiken School of the Arts and Oakwood Windsor Elementary School. They'll discuss the grant money at tonight's board meeting.
The district is also working on spending $1 million in donations. It's through the SRP High School Affinity Debit Card Program. That program started in 2018 to help high schools around the county with funding. Each high school has its own card, and every time the card is used, the school gets a donation that can be used any way they wish. Typically, when school districts receive funds, they're earmarked. They have a bunch of rules that we have to use to spend them. And sometimes they're varied between getting the funds to where they can actually help the kids the most. So when we get funds like this from, from outside organizations, it's just tremendous, and it has an immediate impact. The fund will help buy new desks, computers, and other necessary resources. If you're interested in becoming an educator, your time could be now. The Richmond County School System and other local programs are partnering to help you start your career. It's all thanks to a nearly $200,000 grant. Bria Smith joins us now in the studio with more. Jenny, that's right. It's a collaborative effort between the Richmond County School System and CSRA RESA. The goal is to help people jumpstart a career as an educator through the non-traditional route. $180,000 in scholarships was donated by the ANGC Community Impact Fund at the Community Foundation for the CSRA. The partnership offers two routes. Teachers can apply for a $2,000 scholarship to enroll in CSRA RESA's TAP program or a $5,000 scholarship to pursue a master's degree at Augusta University's College of Education. There are a lot of individuals with a heart for serving children, and they really want to invest in the community, but some of them have a barrier to getting that initial certification. And so what that means is without that initial certification, they're teaching in the system, and they may have been hired on that waiver, as you mentioned, which is provisional certification. So that's where our program comes in. Scholarship recipients are required to work in the school system for at least two years after earning their certification. And to learn more about the application process, visit WJBS.com. Jenny? Thanks, Bria. Richmond County School uh, Board of Elections, not school board, but Board of Elections, is discussing security at polling locations and proposed rule change. Also, voters who typically report to the Charles Evans Community Center on Highland Avenue should know the center will not be open for early voting. Henry Brigham will serve as your new advanced polling location. Coming up, it could be the information you need to save the life of someone you love. The warning signs of suicide next. It was a nice, warm, sunny day today, but the clouds will start moving in tomorrow and have those umbrellas ready for the last part of the week. That's all due to, due to Tropical Storm Frank theme, which I'll have the latest on coming up. Starting now, you can apply to work at the 2025 Masters Tournament. Positions are open in concessions, hospitality, culinary, merchandise, and security. Applications will be accepted through December 2nd. To apply, go to jobs.masters.com. The Masters will also host a job expo on Thursday, October 17th at the Hub for Community Innovation. Today is Hunger Action Day. Food banks all over the nation are highlighting the need for food supply. Each day this month, Feeding America represents a challenge to raise money. Here at home, Golden Harvest is not only participating, but raising awareness and spreading the message. One in four children, one in seven individuals in our 25 county service area that are struggling with food insecurity. It's the highest rate in our area in 15 years. Color for Hunger Action Month is orange, and so we encourage people to wear orange. We've got orange t-shirts that say, this is my hunger um, fighting t-shirt. <laughs> so we're wearing those this month. But uh, again, just encouraging the community to, um, to take action this month, because it is a, a month we can really shine a light on this and do some incredible work together. By donating just a dollar to Golden Harvest Food Bank, you can help provide 10 meals. There are people making a difference in our community, the 2024 Red Cross Heroes. These brave men and women were recognized this morning at a breakfast at First Baptist Church of Augusta. The annual event celebrates people who helped others in times of need. So, you know, uh, every time that we talk to the heroes, they always go, oh, I'm not a hero. I just hop in to do something. Well, that's what a hero is. And so we hope this event inspires other people in our community to, one, know the wonderful people that we have in the CSRA, and also to know if there's something in need, they can hop in and be a hero, too. Do stuff. When you set out to do stuff, they help people. Uh, you don't really do it for no recognition. So to be recognized, you know, it feels real good. 
Stephen Thompson received the Military Hero Award for his work with our local veterans. September is Suicide Awareness Month, and doctors say it happens too often, even with our first responders, who see so much tragedy during their careers. Lauren Martinez explains the warning signs. The month-long observance is an important reminder that suicide is a national health crisis and one of the leading causes of death in the United States. In fact, suicide is the 11th most common cause of fatalities in Virginia. According to the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, in the Commonwealth, there were 1,230 suicides statewide in 2023. And as of September 3, 2024, there have been 756 certified suicides accounted for this year. During the pandemic, there was a lot of focus on mental health, and there were a lot more people reaching out. I think as people have returned to life, you know, it changes how they're managing their mental health. While suicide doesn't discriminate, there are certain groups susceptible to suicide more than others. We, you know, we do see, particularly African-American community with youth, um, young males in particular, there has been an increase. But we know that there are systemic issues. Veterans, LGBTQ individuals, construction workers, and senior citizens also top the list. The first and most important thing is you're looking for a change in behavior. Um, you are looking for maybe somebody's drinking more than normal. Maybe they're withdrawing from their friends. But the greatest signal that a person may want to end their life is the very words they speak. And they'll say things like, I just feel like I'm such a burden. Or I'm just so tired, you know, beyond a normal tired. Um, you'll hear people say, life would be easier for those around me if I just wasn't here. Goller says prevention starts with a conversation, and don't hesitate, as it could save a life. Mental health experts say take this month to stand beside those who have lost a loved one to suicide. 988 is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, connecting people to trained counselors 24-7. We'll be right back. Weather headlines on WGBF News Channel 6. Brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. This was it? The Wilson Attorneys at Law. Now, your most accurate forecast with WGBF Live Viper 6. Welcome back. Let's take a little trip to Texas on our Skyview Cam. Thanks to our friends at Terry Liberty Hyundai, where we have gloomy skies. So look at that cloud cover downtown Houston. It was raining just a few moments ago, and you notice that the roads are wet and lots of cloud cover there. And if we look at the temperatures, it's reflective of that. So only 81 degrees there in Houston, 78 in New Orleans, where we're pretty toasty on throughout the southeast at 86 degrees here in Augusta. So what's the culprit of all this? Well, we're on the warmer side because we have high pressure in control that's clearing out those skies for us, allowing us to enjoy lots of sunshine for today. But as we pan out, you can see the culprit of all the cloud cover is from Tropical Storm Francine there right outside of Houston, bringing in lots of clouds there and also some rain. So let's look at the currents for Francine. Still a tropical storm. Current winds at 65 miles per hour. can tell that center is becoming more and more defined as it's strengthening and heading towards the Gulf coastline. So bringing lots of rain right now to northern Mexico and southern Texas right now. So let's look at that track, which will be updated in the next 30 minutes or so. But as of 2 o'clock, the track has it strengthening to a Cat 1 hurricane by tonight. So we will come a uh, hurricane tonight and then continuing strengthening as it pretty much tracks straight into the Louisiana coastline, looking to make landfall tomorrow on Wednesday and then continuing up pretty much the Mississippi River kind of aligned with that track. And if that's not enough, we actually have two other areas of interest. This one, the first one is actually losing strength, so might not even have anything to talk about there over the next couple of days. The second one, however, is gaining strength and likely to become a tropical depression later on this week. So today is the peak of hurricane season, and we're about a third of the way through our name, so that next name storm could be Tropical Storm Gordon, but we'll keep you updated on that. So back at home with our rain chances, nice and dry today, beautiful day. Tomorrow we're going to stay dry as well, but you'll notice those clouds increasing, and as you can see with Francine, that's going to really affect our forecast as we go towards the end of the week with our rain chances increasing going into Thursday and Friday. So playing that out with our future cast, sunshine to enjoy today, but notice those clouds building in as we go through Wednesday and that cloud cover will continue throughout the day. So partly to mostly cloudy conditions for your Wednesday, but then notice the green starting to come in there as we kind of pan out and go through the day Wednesday and Thursday. So there is Francine and you can tell the rain bands coming off of that and moving through our area on Thursday. Very scattered.
scattered in nature on Thursday, so not expecting a total washout, but going to want to have that umbrella handy for Thursday. But for tonight, another cool night with overnight lows in the 60s, a few degrees warmer than yesterday thanks to that cloud cover. But high temperatures stay below average and in the 80s for the next couple of days. So soak up all that sunshine for today because those clouds will be moving in starting tomorrow. And then you're going to want to have that umbrella handy for the next couple of days. Very well, my yard does need it. it we do need the, the rain. rain. All right, thank you. Coming up, the candidates for president will be... Yeah, News Channel 6. The Live Piper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Blue skies and sunshine led us to a terrific Tuesday forecast, but big changes are on the way. I'll have all the details for you coming up. Now at 4.30 for the first time, former New York it took its toll on teens. Why girls' brains are aging particularly quickly. Your news at 4 30 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 4 30. candidates are set to make their case to the country. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us at 4.30. I'm Dee Griffin, Vice President Kamala Harris, and former... Time now for a first look at our weather with meteorologist Sherry Sheely and another nice day. Yes, we are really knocking it out of the mm -hmm. park with the forecast for the first part of the yeah. week, but unfortunately... Things are about to change, oh, but boy. we'll enjoy it while we can right now, right? Yeah. So looking at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam in Swainsboro, cloud cover is a little bit heavier there than it is here in Augusta where we've had beautiful blue skies most of the day today. And notice the winds there. As you can see, the trees really shaking there in the breeze, and every once in a while you'll see the stars and stripes start to flow as well. So looking at those wind speeds coming from the north-northeast at 7 miles per hour there in Swainsboro, and 9 miles per hour in Wrightsville, 10 in Aiken, and 11 in Augusta. So a nice little breeze blowing this afternoon. Temperature-wise, 86 degrees here in Augusta, 87 in Evans, and down in Swainsboro where they've got that thicker cloud cover. A few degrees cooler at 82. So all of us have had those seasonable temps, and something we're not used to is these lower dew points in the 50s. What that means for us is it feels so comfortable outside, not that sticky, humid mess that we're usually used to. How about some relative humidity at 29%? So that's pretty nice for us, feeling more like fall there and less like summer. But the temperatures are a little bit warmer today at 87 degrees are high, but then we'll fall back into those lower 80s when the sun goes down. And as that sun goes down, we'll start to see those clouds increase and then changes on the way for our forecast for the middle of the week. I'll have all those details for you coming up in your full forecast. Dee? All right, we'll see you then. Thanks so much, Sherry. Well, today, two Delta planes were able to make contact and sustained damage in Atlanta. According to airline executives, the wing of one of the flights made contact with the tail of a regional jet this morning on the taxiway. Both the wing and the tail are damaged. There are no reports of injuries. Impacted customers will be placed on alternate flights. Delta leaders say they are cooperating with the NTSB and other authorities in this incident. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is tattles. In other news, there's a new study on the toll the pandemic took on teens. Researchers say teenagers' brains aged more rapidly, especially girls. Rhiannon Alley reports. A new study is revealing unusual changes in teenagers' brain development during the pandemic. It's not that surprising to know that there are actual brain changes that happened during the pandemic, given everything that teens, especially teen girls, faced. The study found COVID-era lockdowns ended up aging teenagers' brains faster than the usual rate, more than four years faster than usual in girls, compared to just over a year faster in boys. The authors hypothesized that adolescent girls were affected more than boys because they may be more dependent on that social interaction and being able to connect with their friends. Back in 2018, researchers began tracking brain changes in 160 people ages 9 to 17. They found lockdowns contributed to an increase of anxiety, depression, and behavioral disorders, causing their brains to mature faster. The same type of accelerated brain aging has been documented in teens who've suffered severe trauma, stress, and neglect. But it's important to note that these studies don't exactly tell us what the long-term effects are or if the process can be reversed or slowed down with the right type of emotional support moving forward. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. 
So what can parents do? Doctors say it's important to respond to any signs of anxiety or depression by getting teens mental health support. Well, here at home, Jenkins County is receiving federal money to help prevent youth substance abuse. The Family Enrichment Center in Mellon will receive $125,000. The grant funding is through the Drug-Free Community Support Program. Six other counties in the state will also receive funding. A proposed NCAA antitrust settlement is now on hold. A federal judge has rejected a key part of the $2.8 billion deal. She's telling the sides to go back to the drawing board. One of the judge's main issues is a section limiting payments to collectives run by school boosters. The deal would also create a sort of salary cap for schools. Lawyers for both sides have three weeks to update the deal. If not, the case could soon go to trial. Coming up, Ryan Seacrest has officially made his Wheel of Fortune hosting debut. We'll have a look in your Hollywood highlights next. And we've enjoyed the sunshine today, but the clouds are going to start to build in to give us a cloudy Wednesday and a rainy Thursday. I'll have all the details on what you can expect coming up. The CW to increase safety in bathroom. Protect your loved ones. Let's help, doctor. Book direct flights to Washington, D.C. at flyags.com. The Black Eyed Peas announce a Vegas residency. Plus, Ryan Seacrest makes his Wheel of Fortune hosting debut. Dana Devon has all the details in today's Hollywood highlights. Ryan Seacrest took over one of the most iconic game show roles in history last night for the first time. He made a smiling entrance, walking arm in arm with longtime co-host and resident letter turner Vanna White before he said a few words. You're welcome to Wheel of Fortune. I am your host, Ryan Seacrest. I still can't believe my luck being here with you tonight to continue this legacy of this incredible show with all of you. Hosting Wheel of Fortune is a dream job. I've been a fan of this show since I was a kid watching it in Atlanta with my family. And I know how special it is that Wheel has been in your living rooms for the past 40 years. And I'm just so grateful to be invited in. Interestingly enough, Ryan did not mention Pat Sajak, the former host by name. But then he smoothly segued into the puzzles that consisted of fitting phrases like opening night. And there's a first time for everything. Here's the first bonus round of the new season. Digital, digital entrapment. Digital contrapment. Well, we got all the digitals but footprint. Oh, oh you were so close. You were right on it. No. And... Oh. No grunting. You've got over $25,000 in cash and prize. You've got those great trips. And not only was there a new host for season 42, there was also a new set. Here's what it looked like for the show's premiere, a very open and airy concept. Wheel of Fortune airs nightly on ABC. And this iconic, multi-Grammy winning, multi-platinum global supergroup has just announced a Las Vegas residency at Planet Hollywood. We may soon know the details about Jamie Foxx's 2023 health scare. The Oscar winner announced he'll be taking the stage in Atlanta for three one-man shows titled What Had Happened Was An Evening with Jamie Foxx. I can hear him saying that actually. What had happened was the exclusive event will feature Foxx discussing many topics, including the medical complication that led to his hospitalization last April. The performances are scheduled for October 3rd through the 5th. Oh, I want to go. I definitely want to go. We'll be right back. Trump's project to you to the earth. The 10 day forecast on News Channel 6 is brought to you by Murphy Auto Group. We're different. Let us prove it. Learn more at MyMiracleAdvantage.com, Facebook, or Instagram. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live 5 for 6. Welcome back. We have beautiful blue skies here in Augusta, as we can see on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam. Just a few little wispy clouds that we can see there on the horizon, but certainly lots of blue to speak of. 86 degrees under sunny skies here in Augusta, and winds a little breezy out there at 11 miles per hour. Winds coming from the southeast, and check out that humidity, only 29%, so feeling pretty comfortable out there. Looking across the CSRA, we've got temperatures ranging from the lower 80s in Allendale, where it's a little more cloud covered, 82 degrees, up to 88 in McCormick, so pretty toasty there, as well as Louisville, 85 in Millen. Some more spots, Saluda, 85, Lincolnton, 87, and Gibson, 87 as well, so everybody in the 80s there, and we've got 
high pressure that's in control of our forecast as we can see on our water vapor loop so there's that h there and all the orange you see there is dry air that's building in but notice we've got that moisture starting to come into our southern line counties providing more cloud cover for our southern half of the CSRA that's not quite enjoying as much sunshine as we are here in Augusta, but it's going to stay nice and dry throughout your Tuesday, but then on Wednesday we will have an increase of clouds for us all, and also some isolated showers, especially for our southern line counties, but then Thursday throughout the weekend, that's where we're going to really need to bring out that umbrella as our rain chances increase significantly, so let's look at that with our future cast, so here we are today, mostly clear conditions and lots of sunshine, but then those clouds kind of build in from the south overnight and into your Wednesday. But then when we go into the afternoon hours, notice some of that moisture associated with Francine getting a little closer to us and our southern line counties, especially Emanuel County, I'm thinking around early afternoon hours, you could see those showers start to sneak in, but then come Thursday, so there's Francine and notice all the moisture surging in from the southeast. And on Thursday, that's when we're going to see more scattered showers and more of us needing that umbrella. And then, of course, as we go into the weekend, going to need it even more. But for tonight, lows looking good in the 60s, a few degrees warmer than today. And then for tomorrow, high temperatures in those low to mid 80s for us. But again, partly to mostly cloudy skies as we go through the day on Wednesday. Our 10-day forecast temperature-wise looking good, staying below average. But again, rain returning to the forecast and starting Wednesday afternoon and through the weekend. That's your forecast, and we'll be right back. This. When you're a parent with teenagers, it can be hard to keep up with all of the slang. Well, one dad in New Zealand is on top of it. Uh, hi, uh, hi, fam. Um, I'm kind of feeling skibbity, um, so I've got off my gear to uh, to come up to Riz up uh, McChicken, please. Hi, RL. Thank you. Uh, that sounds like um, It's just uh, just one check. Um, I'm thirsty, so maybe uh, do you have a medium lemonade? Oh, it sounds awesome. Um, do you have the Sunday? Oh, if you have the Sunday, I will have the gritty. Um, no cap. Um, oh, my daughter's a shock. <laughs> Don't be salty. Um, yeah. Oof. Let's go chocolate, weird flakes. Um, small, big, great bags. Uh, well, that's Ben Boyce of Jono, and Ben is the host of a hit breakfast radio show in New Zealand and has fun embarrassing his kids. I need to do that to my son because everything's all about Sigma, and, you know, and then he's busting, and no cap, and grindy, and all this stuff. So, well, coming up on News Channel 6 at 5, a grant for teachers. We're learning more about what the funding is for and why it's needed in Richmond County. Don't go away. Jenny has your news next at 6 at 5. On WGBF News Channel 6, brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson.